Hello, you cunts, Black Power, how you doing? <laughs> I'm from here, I'm from Glasgow, a city where people think that hepatitis B is a fucking vitamin. <laughs> it's a very different city from Edinburgh. There's a far lower crime rate uh, in Edinburgh. Far fewer people get stabbed in Edinburgh. But there is a tragic side to Edinburgh. There are a lot more people there who need stabbed. Oh, I should say, if you're not from here, there's going to be quite a lot of swearing in this show. <laughs> swearing is different in Scotland. In Scotland, the word fucking is just a warning that a noun is on its way. <laughs> I think the most I laughed last year. I actually fell down onto my knees laughing at this. I went to a personal trainer in Glasgow. That's not the joke. <laughs> I went to a personal trainer who had a moustache. Now, when I tell English audiences this, they never quite get it, but we know, don't we? Any Scottish guy with a moustache is fucking psychotic. <laughs> Remember, like, Graham Soonis back in the day? They all speak as if uh, trying to hold back some kind of dreadful memory. <laughs> and this guy actually said this to me, right? He went, Mr. Boyle, I can see from your food diary that yesterday for dinner, you ate a bag of chocolate money. <laughs> I didn't realise you could get sacked by a personal trainer. <laughs> it's weird getting older as well. When I was a teenager, ejaculating was like a fucking firework going off. I'm 47 now. When I ejaculate, it's like Tim Robbins escaping from Shawshank. <laughs> I think I get less interested in sex as I get less capable of having sex. I couldn't really lift a woman up against a wall anymore. Depends on the wall, obviously, but it's very few women's sexual fantasy to be jackknifed over a garden wall. <laughs> your options really narrow in your 40s. You're pretty much reduced to going out with people that you've already gone out with. The sexual equivalent of eating out of the bin. I mean, there's upsides, obviously. You know, I've got kids now, that's amazing. One of your orgasms now has a face. <laughs> it's mind-blowing. <laughs> but I grew up... I grew up working class and always in a relationship. So now, to be middle class and single, I find myself thinking things I've never thought before. Trying not to come on the good sofa. I really give a shit about my parents. I think I stopped caring about my parents when I realised the reason that women weren't having sex with me was my personality. <laughs> I actually recently donated my body to science after it was rejected by necrophilia. <laughs> Don't knock necrophilia, it's the only truly victimless crime. Look, some of this show is going to be fucking grim, right? <laughs> People get the wrong idea about me. They think I'm depressed or something. I'm not depressed. I don't wish that I was dead. I wish that you were all dead. <laughs> we had a scandal around comic relief this year. Now, I've always felt that comic relief should be done on a pay-as-you-laugh kind of a basis. You watch it, you pay a little something every time you laugh. Mrs. Brown's boys do a sketch and end up owing Chad £30 million. <laughs> but there was, there was a scandal because Stacey Dooley Instagrammed a photo of herself with a wee Ugandan boy. And MP David Lammy he said, well, this is an element of white saviour complex to it. I think it did, because the colonial power in Uganda was Britain. 
Then we send comic relief over there and go, these people have nothing because we took it. <laughs> people say, why don't they send black celebrities? Well, we don't have a black version of Stacey Dooley. That's why representation's so important. Idris Elba can't do everything, right? <laughs> the guy has rushed off his feet at the man. Oh, so the way things are here just now, if we sent Idris Elba to Uganda, he wouldn't definitely be allowed back into Britain. <laughs> right, there's a colonial side to British charity, it's true. Look at Yemen, right? We're the number one provider of weapons and, and bombs and expertise to Saudi Arabia that they use to bomb Yemen to engineer a famine in Yemen. At the same time, we're the number two provider of aid to Yemen. And why not? Life gives you Yemen, you give Yemen aid. <laughs> I turned 47 last month and my pal said to me, do you know Biggie Smalls would have been 47 this year if he hadn't been shot? No, he wouldn't. You wouldn't have made it past the invention of stuffed crust pizza. <laughs> I don't want to grow into one of these old, moany Scottish guys, though, do you know what I mean? Like, this happened to me, this is true. I was having a wee snooze in a park in Glasgow one day, right? Because <laughs> my career was going particularly well that year. And an old guy came up to me and went, do you know your problem? You're fucking unapproachable. <laughs> I'm not an ageist, though. Certainly not sexually. <laughs> Cover my cock in scratch card foil and throw me into the fucking bingo. <laughs> I think our old people get annoyed because they don't get the same respect that old people got when they were younger. That's because old people when they were younger had fought against the Nazis. All our old people have fought against is gay marriage and type 2 diabetes. <laughs> There's upsides to it as well, obviously, you know. Man and uncle, they were married for 52 years. And do you know what? They died within hours of each other because he nailed all the windows shut before setting fire to the house. 